All right. Welcome to Broker to Broker, sponsored by AIM, Association of Independent Mortgage Experts. I am your host, JP Hussey of the Hussey Team Mortgage Advisors. And today I got my buddy, Matt Grella, Nexa yeah. Mortgage. How you doing? Good co co owner, co founder, right? Co founder, yeah. And what I noticed, Matt with one T. <laughs> it is, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's another big time dude with one T. There is there HBA, is, yeah. right? Yeah, there is, man. UWM. You know, I'm a two years older, so uh, I had it first. You know, you had you had oh really? Yeah, by two years. All right. Yeah, my mom talking wanted some to give me, smack you know, to Matt. Hey, Matt. Well, plus you know, I'm a Michigan guy. That's my team. He's a state guy, so we uh, every time I go out there, I'm always giving him crap. All right, so hold on. we were talking before this. So next, it, well, and you guys are in Arizona. We're in Arizona, yeah. You're from New York. You from heard that the kind of the East Coast accent, right? <laughs> Is that but that? you're a Michigan fan. I am. So a huge what's Michigan what's the fan. deal with this? You know, uh, growing up on Long Island, you you've got you don't have too many college teams. To That's a good from. point. That's a good point. You know, so my my friends were either Notre Dame or mm-hmm. you know. Ohio State, yeah. you know, whatever, uh, and Penn State fans. So I had to, I had to pick something different, right? So I'm five years old watching TV uh, every Saturday morning. The games are coming on, and it's always when you're in New York, like you know, Michigan was prime time. Yeah, so yeah. you're always seeing these these wing helmets coming out. Mm-hmm. You know, I sitting out there, I go, you know, M for Michigan, M for Matt. I'm five years old, didn't know, saw the colors, saw the helmets. I was like, you know what? That's my team. And from that point on, it was it. Yeah, I got, I got to give a shout out to my buddy Josh Gribben, one of my best friends. He's from PA, but okay. Michigan fan. Hey, so shout out. There you right. go. Well, actually, go blue. He was born out there. Yeah, that, the the big house, right? Yeah, the big yeah. House. I was out there a couple years ago. We it's go pretty out, cool. I take my son there. The last two years, we've gone out for homecoming. Yeah, it's been great. Nice, nice. Yeah. All right, well, let's. I want to get to know you a bit more. Okay. We're gonna get into the mortgage stuff, all the all the boring stuff, right? It is boring. No, but <laughs> like we, yeah, it is, but. It, you know, we're trying to make this fun, right, and right. that's how it should be. We'll, we'll get into that. But I want to know your background. We know you're from from New York, yeah. right? When did you move to Arizona? And then how, you know, tell me, if you want, tell me a little bit about your family. You said yeah. you have two kids. I do. And then I want to know how you got in the industry. So, uh, you know, we'll go back, right? So yeah. 2001, it was it was shortly after, uh, after 9-11, I'd moved out to Arizona. Mm-hmm. My parents had... Um, Previously retired there, like the year before, I was still kind of um, finding my way. I was about 19, 20 years yeah. old. Uh, so I decided to uh, to make the leap. When they first went out to retire, I went out with them, uh, and I hated it. Yeah, I hated it, man. There's this, you know, it's just it's brown, it's hot. People are different coming from People New York. Are different. There's no yeah. culture, really. Like you know, it was just it different. was hard. It was different. Hard. All right. So uh, I lasted about six months. Packed up all my stuff in my car and I drove back to New York. And I'm like, that's it. I'm living on my own, right? That's it. I'm gonna yeah, do yeah. this. I was working about four or five jobs, just hustling every day, mm-hmm. just making ends meet. Uh, and then, you know, better heads prevailed. I still had some people that I knew in Arizona, and, and they were actually buying houses. And I'm like, you're 21 years old, 20, yeah. and you're buying a house. Like, how do you do that? And this is what 2003 ish. No, this is still 2001. 2001. Right? Yeah. yeah. So when cool. I'm like, how is that even possible? So. I started realizing, you know, living in New York, working four jobs, making trying to make ends meet. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't gonna get where I wanted to be. So yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give Arizona a second try. So I go back out to Arizona. In fact, it happened right after 9-11. I went out in October, went back out mm-hmm. um and been out there ever since. And uh, you know, always been a hustler, always been a guy who, mm-hmm. who works hard. Um, you know, my my upbringing was pretty standard um you know my father passed away when i was young you know i was 10 years old he had mm-hmm. passed away from cancer so uh that was a little tough right yeah, but no doubt. uh you know you learn things right you learn you know how to work hard you learn that uh you're not gonna get handed things mm-hmm. so you know you just start putting that forward every day and and maybe um, we're a bit biased but we're the east coast we're east hard coast. worker yeah, man hard worker, i mean man. we're just you know? the best people in the world i mean <laughs> <laughs> hey i i agree no so uh <laughs> all right so you're back in arizona back in arizona. all right and this yeah. is in the 2001 2002 ish right 2001, 2002 okay yeah okay so you went back you some of your friends out there were buying houses they were buying houses man i couldn't believe it so then what you sparked know? your interest is that when you kind of got into no, the mortgage this, game or this is keep, pretty i want to hear it man, all man i love you want to hear this whole thing yeah 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 I was actually working for Blockbuster Video. Nice. Remember that place where oh, you could yeah. go into a store and you could pick a movie off the shelf? Yeah. So I was a manager and uh, working there for, yeah, I was about, I think about six years I'd been working for him. And um, started seeing the writing on the wall, you know? And uh, so it was a top producer, top performer with them and all that stuff. Been in a bunch of events. Six years at Blockbuster yeah, Video? Yeah. That's hardcore. So it, it was it was pretty good. But yeah. uh, I got to the point where um, 
I started seeing some of the writing on the wall, so I jumped out. And this was about 2006. I finally mm -hmm. got out of it. Uh, and it was right before they crashed because they crashed in like 07 or whatever. Wow, it's been that after. long? Yeah, it's Whoa. been a long time. Okay. And I got a job. I was working at uh, University of Phoenix, you know, yeah. doing online enrollment. I was an mm -hmm. enrollment counselor. Then I became an enrollment manager, led a team. Um, and just the phone sales. I was always a sales guy, right? I could always talk. I was always a salesperson. Um, so for me, it was just natural and it was awesome. It was over the phone. So it wasn't like in person, right? Right, right, so right. It was pretty cool. Um, and taught me a lot about multitasking because I was constantly on the phone while, you know, pulling stuff up on the screen yeah. to go over stuff with, with, with the students and all uh -huh. that stuff. Um, so I learned a lot there, learned a lot about the co corporate culture and all that stuff. Um, and, you know, I was, I was a manager for about nine, nine and a half years, and I was starting to get a little tired. Well, yeah. I, I was more than a little tired. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, it got to the point where it really wasn't much of a challenge. And uh, I had decided, you know what, it's, it's, I felt like my, my, my professional career wasn't going anywhere. So I felt like I had to do something. So I decided to take a leap of faith. And out of nowhere, uh, we had bought a house previously in like 2008. Uh -huh. And we bought another one in 2010. And I started thinking to myself, you know what, I could do this mortgage thing. Like, this, this does not seem hard. It's numbers. Mm -hmm. I love numbers. Um, it's talking to people. It's selling. I was like, this is, this is what I like to do. I like putting people in the best position possible, mm -hmm. right? So uh, I decided to take a leap of faith. Was there like a specific person that kind of got you in or you reached out? I, you know, not even. I, I, dude, I did this, this blind. This is cool. This is like, this, this is, is like. This is totally blind. I'm jumping, right? I burnt the boats, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm in, right? So, okay. Um, I, I go, I get my license and all that stuff. And now I'm sitting there going, all right, what do you do next? Right. You didn't even have a company. Didn't, didn't you have You just anything. got licensed. Didn't have anything. Just got licensed. This license. is 2010-ish? This is, no, no, this is a little bit later. So this is 2000, um, I, I've only been doing this for four years. Oh, so all right. So we're talking 2015. Oh, cool. All right, right, sweet, sweet, okay. So I get, I get the license and I'm talking to some people who are like, hey man, you're going to want to go work for one of the big retail yeah. places because they're going to uh -huh. provide you leads. And I knew I was a phone guy, so I knew I needed leads. But I'm like, all right, let me just think about that first. So yeah. start looking into it, and I see this ad that comes across on LinkedIn. I had a recruiting ad, and it was like, you know, provided leads, high splits, this, that, and the other. Um, and and the, the girl who actually posted it was somebody who I knew from University of Phoenix. She was an academic counselor. I was an yeah. enrollment manager. So I was like, hey, all right, let me try it out. yeah. So I interview and I and and Mike Cordes, okay, yeah, you know my business partner now. Yep. Um, he was the branch manager, and he 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 ran ran a lead team, and he wanted uh, was looking for some more LOs. So okay, um, you know, we sat with him when I first met him. I'm like, this guy's a jerk. <laughs> this guy's I want this guy's man. He's he's a he's an asshole. He's right? a cocky one. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, I don't know if I like this stereotypical guy. mortgage guy. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? You know, he's just all. Yeah, you yeah. know, I was top producer and, you know, uh, that, and I'm like, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, he's going to yeah, hear that. So, that's fine. Um, so we go through that, you know, the whole go through that interview. And he's like, so what do you, you know, he wanted me to like commit right then and there. And I'm like, oh, no, no. I'm like, you know what? I have another interview lined up with another. And what company was this? Where This was Security National Mortgage. Security so they, National. Yeah, what yeah. were they, like a correspondent type? City? No, they were a retail banker. The retail yeah, banker. Yeah, they are okay. retail, right? Okay. So um, I wound up. You know, say, I said, you know what? I have another interview lined up. Uh, one of my friends who had left University of Phoenix, he had uh, a friend who was really high up at Academy Mortgage. Uh -huh. He's like, hey, you know what? I can set you up with an interview if that's what you want to do. And I'm like, sure, I'll give it a shot. So I told Mike, I said, you know what? Out of respect, I want to hear this guy out. Yeah, no doubt. So uh, I, I leave, go to the interview. Uh, I'm sitting down w w with the with Ryan, Ryan Nelson, who, who was at Academy Mortgage at the time. Uh, and he's just talking to me and he's like, yeah, you know what? We'll bring you on as an LOA. You can be a, an assistant. We'll assign you right. to like one of our top performing LOs. And I go, ah, you know what, dude, I, I didn't leave to do this, to, to be an assistant. Right. So I, I, you know, I can't do that. So, uh, I, I politely declined, called Mike up. I said, dude, I'm in. And that was it, dude. That, that started it off. Nice. And it was just hitting the phones every day. I mean, I was I was grinding it out. Yeah, and that's know? and that's not for. I mean, you had the experience already, like you said, in sales. Yeah. But like you know, that's not like a lot of people have to start as an LOA or processing yeah. just to figure it out. Yeah. But you're like, nah, screw it all. Right. That was me. I mean, 2011, right right before we were having, I like I was saying, I'm a lunatic with three kids. Our first <laughs> kid was being born. I'm like. I was working at like a credit repair company. I had whatever, okay. but I'm like, I got to make money now. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I went full in. You know, just tried to figure it out. 2011. Yeah. You that's know, that's crazy. It was the same type of thing. Now, not everyone's cut out 
right. for that. Right. I had some sales experience, but so you went you went full boat. I went full. You started providing leads. You were just banging the phones, dude. I, I knew that. Uh, you know, I, I knew I had always been pretty successful, whatever I, I did, because I, I knew that I was a hard worker. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it, you know, was I going to make millions? I didn't know. Was I going to make 150 grand? I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I knew I'd be able to make ends meet and I knew I'd be able to work hard. Yeah, you seem so. like it, it. And tell me if I'm wrong and type of dude where it doesn't matter what you're selling. You're going to you're going to figure it out. You're going to figure out the system. Yeah. I mean, we keep hearing it, even Anthony's talking about, like, mortgages, it's a commodity. It is. It is, it right? Is. So it's kind of like anything anything else. So that's well, kind of how you service. saw it, right? Yeah, it's exactly yeah. how I saw it. So my, my, my thought process is it doesn't matter what, I'm, what I sell. What I, as long as I learn the product mm -hmm. and I learn uh, as long as there's a benefit to, to, to the client, right? So I started off, like, with, with you know, Univer point. University of Phoenix. I'm selling education. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't want to get an education? Yeah, yeah. Who doesn't want opportunity? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Who doesn't want to graduate and have an uh, have an opportunity to make more money? Mm -hmm. Right, provide for your family mm -hmm. and, and just a living that you, you know, that you've dreamed of. Right, the American dream. And then I I, I started taking that into mortgages, and now mm -hmm. I'm selling the idea of owning that house. Mm -hmm. Right, like the next step in your in your. And life that's important, like you said, home. owning a house, not. Selling mortgages. Right, so, selling mortgage. Nobody it, wants a mortgage. Own, no, it's owning a home. So yeah, I, yeah. my approach was really easy. It okay. was to understand the, the buyer, right? We didn't talk about mortgages when I first got on the phone with you. We'd talk mm -hmm. about, hey, where are you yep. looking to be? Where mm -hmm. do you want to be? Mm -hmm. Where are you looking to move? When are you planning on moving? All that stuff, right? The who, what, when, why, and how. Yeah, yeah. So we'd go through that whole process, and then we would just work naturally into the conversation. Yep. And, you know, I was, you know, closing... I, at one point, I was the branches production. Like I was doing all yeah. the production, right? So, um, so we're doing that at Security National Mortgage. Mike has a quick exit. Um, prior to, he's like, "Hey, dude, I'm going to be leaving, but we want you to come with us. Like, we can't do this without you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you got to come with us." I'm like, "All right, cool." So, uh, I switched. So here it is. Like I had, you know, University of Phoenix for ten years. Prior to that, Blockbuster, Blockbuster. for six. Here I am, six months into being a loan officer, six and I'm months. starting a new job. <laughs> and I'm right. starting a new employer. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting here thinking to myself, well, I, ah, man, I don't know. But, you know, M Mike and I, we had a really, really uh, good relationship. So I trusted him a lot. He trusted me. So uh, it was natural, right? Uh -huh. So we, we moved over to uh, Equity Prime Mortgage. Okay, yeah, Equity Prime. Uh, we started the first branch in Arizona. To like 2016-ish to get a timeline? Uh, 16, yeah. 16? Yeah, 2016, exactly. Because okay, cool. 17, we opened up Nexa Mortgage. Okay. You know? So we're there, and, um, man, we're doing it. And uh, we're, we're doing really well as a branch. And, uh, you know, for whatever happened, management disagreements, uh, upper yeah, management Yeah, whatever it is. Whatever it's always it was, something. It was, you know, retail branches. Yeah. Um, I got to the point where we had hired a guy who was a broker and really cool guy, Mike Bennett, you know, awesome uh -huh. guy. And I give him a lot of credit because if it wasn't for this guy, I probably wouldn't have thought about becoming a broker. Right. Cool. And he comes up and he's like, you know, what, Matt, you're really smart. He's like, you know, all the guidelines, you know, you can structure a loan better than anybody I've seen in the business in 25 years. Uh, and you can sell. He's like, well, you're, you're, you're like, you know, you're doing an awesome job. You should really think about becoming a broker and doing this on your own. So I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do that. Like, I'm going to take the next step. Like, this yeah. sounds awesome, right? So I start looking into it, and I find out, you know what? You need to be licensed in Arizona for three years. Well, I wasn't licensed Is that the for rule? three years. Yeah. I okay. had only had two. So I was short of the licensing requirement just to be my own broker. So yeah. I'm like, well, can't really do that yet. So I started thinking, well, the next best thing, I'm like, you know, I, Mike took me under his wing. Maybe I can convince him to come over. So I yeah. start talking to Mike. We start working on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, no, 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 broker, you can't do it. You know, the, 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 the margin is too small, yeah. you know, all the stuff that you yeah, hear. That you hear, right. Um, and you know, I, I, I kept working on it every day. Right. I mean, it was like Novocaine, just keep uh -huh. working slowly. Uh -huh. Um, and we finally got to an agreement. He's like, you know what, dude, I think, I think you might have, you might be onto something. Cause I told him, I said, look, I'm leaving and I'm either going to go hang my license under another broker. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I can't do it myself. Right. Like, that's wait my, the year and I'm doing it anyway. Whatever. Right. So. Um, so I said, Hey, this is, this is my plan. That's what I'm doing. And, and I'm leaving. So I left and like within a week of me leaving, yeah, equity prime shut it off. They'd shut the Whoa. branch. They were like, Hey, your production's gone. We'll oh, well, plug. I guess that makes sense. Cause you were, you were gone. <laughs> yeah. Right? So that started, uh, what are we going to do now? And we had already done some stuff in the, in the, okay. in the background yeah, of how, the company going. How quick did that take to, to start up Nexa from that situation? <sighs> 
could get in trouble for saying that. All right, well, you know, <laughs> I mean, don't get yourself in trouble. No, I had a, um, we had an, I had an edu- ed- yeah, exit yeah. strategy. Sure. Where I had somebody who was, who had already started a, um, she owned a brokerage. We hired an RI. So in Arizona, you can rent an RI, you can hire an RI. Okay. To, who's got a broker's license? They use their license. Well, what's an RI? To get a re, Just, uh, responsible individual. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah. Yep. So um, we had somebody else that we start. I started the company. We started doing that, and I used his license. But yeah. the company wasn't producing loans. It was just yeah. sitting there. But that's legit. That's that's yeah. a, that's a, it's all legit. Yeah. Like, I've so oh, it was nothing people. bad. Or no, yeah. no, no, no. So we started to uh, you go through the process. You know, you got to get the you know, credit. You know, you got to approve the pulp. Yeah, the whole thing. Stuff. You yeah, set up yeah. lenders, right? Yeah, I just did it this year, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go, man. Yeah. So I remember going to, uh, you know, the, the trade shows and all that stuff, and I didn't have business cards. I'm writing my name on like cocktail napkins. <laughs> yeah, going, hey, you know, <laughs> some people like that though, man. You know, it's it, just it, it different way cool. of doing it. It was yeah, yeah. cool. So that, I mean, that's really that was like the ground up, and uh, you know, so we're we're going all these different lenders and. We're tr- I'm trying to pitch them on my vision, right? My vision is to be, we want, I want to be the largest broker in, you know, in the country. And they're laughing at me. Uh, and I'm like, no, seriously, yeah. like, this is how I'm going to do it, right? And they're like, no, no, you can't do it, right? And, you know, so Mike and I, are, you know, we're, we're going out, we're talking about this stuff, and, and we're, hey, we're going to be the largest. And we don't care what it takes, we're going to do it. So we're writing our name on these cocktail napkins, and um, people are just laughing at us. And then um, I remember going to renew my license. I had to do the classes. You know, we just yeah, went through thing. it, all of us. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting in this in this class, and I actually did it in person because I wanted to. I, I don't know why. I just wanted to do it in person. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting in the class. We're going around the room. Everybody's introducing themselves, and they're all brokers. Mm. And I'm sitting there going, oh, this is a good opportunity for me to start picking people's brains. Yeah. So I'm going through the room, and I start talking to a couple of these guys, and everybody's telling me, like, I'm telling my goal or my vision. And they're all like, okay, Johnny, yeah, sure, good man. job. Yeah, you know, move over. And I'm like, no, I want to be the largest broker. Why can't I, why don't you think it'll work? Brokers can, you know, the biggest you can grow is it's maybe tough five to scale, or six, blah, blah, tough blah. To scale, yeah, this, that, you know, margins, this, margins, that. everything, right? You're hearing the whole thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, I'm not going to get discouraged. Like, you know, uh-uh. I got a goal. We have a goal. We know what we're doing. So we leave, we start next a mortgage. When was that? Uh, it was October 2017. All right, 2017. Yeah. So you guys, yeah, there was brokers around. There were. But like we yeah. know, this thing just popped off in the past year. Yes. So you guys were kind of at the beginning of the, we the came movement, at the beginning right? of the movement, yeah. So I remember going The to, new uh, movement? The new movement. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the second coming yeah, yeah. of uh, <laughs> exactly. brokers. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I remember, so we started, and we have, uh, it's myself, Mike. We had another partner at the time. He's not uh, with us anymore. We, uh-huh. we Cut yeah. that tie. Uh, and we had, I think, four other loan officers, and that was it. What about processors? Anything in the you mix know, there? So or you guys were just running hard. We were running hard. Uh-huh. We, we made um, we made people into processors that yeah. probably had never done it before in their life, and we didn't know what the hell we were doing. Yeah, yeah, sure. So we're we're stepping in every every landmine you can find. We're stepping on them, right? Every trap, everything, every hurdle we're hitting. I mean, it was ugly, right? Yeah. So, well, you didn't have this community like we do now. No, like, not at all. This is amazing. Like brokers have a really good opportunity right now to to start something up or flip because there's so many. Like yourself, yeah. like yeah. you were one of the the OGs of the yeah. second coming, <laughs> right? You you stepped in everything. We, oh man, you name it. So you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's still tough. I mean, like, no matter with this community, I'll it's put, crazy. Yeah. But our first uh, our first lender through the door was Carrington. Okay. It was the first lender that we set up with Uh um, and came to find out that we weren't fully set up. Like our AE was just trying to get loans over and we weren't fully set up. So then um, the the lender that came to our rescue was Caliber. Mm -hmm. So Chrissy Steele, fabulous account exec, came to our our rescue. um, And I remember, I I mean, I had gone from being the originator, just going out and originating loans. And we had um, some processors before that were good. Um, to all of a sudden, like, now we don't have any processors. So I'm yeah. trying to figure out how to process. I'm Everything. trying to do a whole thing. I've mm-hmm. got 12 loans I'm trying to close. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm going nuts. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was just one of those things, man. It was just, it was every day um, you didn't know. Every mm-hmm. day was like, go, go, go. It was something new. It was a surprise. Uh, and I, I thrive in that environment. Yeah. You it's know? chaos. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. So if it's not chaotic, it's it's uh, it's it's too slow, man. It's it's too boring. I yeah, I think a lot of people, whether you're in retail, broker, everyone's chasing this perfect system. 
It's yeah. always it's it's not. Once you can no. kind of fall and bow down to that, that yeah. it's going to be chaos and constantly work on organizing the chaos. Yep. Then that's that's how you have to look at. It. There's no shiny object. There's nothing no. out there that's going to make it perfect. No, there's right? no magic wand. No, you know, I mean, embrace the chaos. Yes, right? that's what you I'm saying. Bow down, deal embrace the, it. Yeah, deal with the ambiguity of the situation mm-hmm. and and go forward. And uh, I t- I'll tell you, it makes you feel alive. Yeah, to do that. Yeah. So, you know, we we we're next to mortgage now, and and we were we we're starting to. You know, we still had that. We had this goal of being the largest broker, and, mm-hmm. and you know, a few few months into it, we're sitting there going, "We don't have that many LOs." You yeah. Know? So we either had to we had to switch something. And right? you're selling still at this point. I'm still. Selling, Are you yeah. selling right now? I am not. You're not. No. Okay. No. So yeah, two, 2017, you got in. You've yeah. only been doing it for a year. Yeah. Really, right? Yeah. yeah well, yeah. Selling. Time, yeah. You're selling obviously to start the company you, off. We got to get yeah. You got to get some money in there. Okay. So you had the LOs. Staff. Yeah, you yep. have to right. Yeah. Um. So then when did you switch? Like, what, what are you and Mike's roles right now? Let's start there. Okay, yeah, perfect So you're both the, the owners, the both, co-founders. Both co-founders, yeah. Okay, so what are your roles right now? So Mike handles a lot. Of, he does all the marketing. Okay. He does a lot of the recruiting mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Um, I do all like, all the operations. Okay. So, you know, handling the, the third-party relationships with, with the other investors and the lenders that are out there. Okay. You know, finding true partners. Lenders mm-hmm. that are true partners of the broker. And we're going to get into that at some oh, point. Yeah, yep. Definitely, okay. you know, maintaining that. Um, maintaining third-party relationships with uh, third-party processing companies and all because mm-hmm. we solely use third-party processing companies. Okay. So we do that too. Interesting. Um, okay. And then training and onboarding LOs. You know, so, um, you know, it, it's really kind of teaching them what we went through. Mm-hmm. But uh, we've been able to catalog everything that we that we went through from day one. And it's in our, our systems that we, you know, when you come on board and you're with Nexa Mortgage, you have access to all of the training material that we've put together from day one, hmm. from the ground up. And you get all that, all of our marketing strategies that we used. We've, we've cata- cataloged all of that stuff. So mm-hmm. um, I, I got to kind of, you know, point them in the right direction because, you know, with 60 plus lenders set up, you know, you come in here to the to Nexa Mortgage and you're sitting there going, well, you're like a kid in a candy store. You don't yeah, know yeah. what to grab it's overwhelming. first. Yeah. yeah. So I, my, my goal is to kind of streamline it for them. So that they can hit the ground running faster, right? Got it. And I streamline it with just, you know, our handful of true partner lenders and, and have them start learning them first. Yeah. So when did you guys really pop off where like you have this goal of being the biggest yeah. in the country? Yeah. You started small. You still have this goal. It hasn't been that long. And you no. guys are yeah, one yeah. of the top right now. We're, are, yeah, we're well, second we're, largest. You're, you're second, right? Yeah. So that's not a long, no. that's not a long time. <laughs> no. Like when did it just kind of pop it popped like is there a specific moment yeah it, so i would have to say it was it was aim fuse last year aim fuse so last year 2018 okay um, it's only been a year it's only been a year yeah that's so t- yeah. october yeah so it's been a year yeah you guys were grinding okay you have so this goal go ahead we're sitting there we got 30 30 loan officers total and we start thinking about ways to um to grow Right. And, and at the time I was still doing the production. So Mike and I sat down and we said, look, in order for this to happen, we've got to become support guys. We've got to teach. We've got to constantly help people, uh, help loan officers that come on board, yeah. show them and teach them how to do this, teach them how to fish. Um, so in order to do that, it was a leap of faith. We, I had to stop producing. Yeah. How hard was that to kind of stop producing? You, you know what? For me, for a guy. That's very tough. Oh, man. Uh, I can tell you, Mike and I had a lot of conversations that th- that weren't very nice conversations. Where I'm like, dude, we can't do this. Like, we're 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 gonna be done. I mean, yeah, right. Like, doors are gonna close pretty soon here. Um, mm. I remember last Christmas wow. having a conversation with him. Like, it was it was I was like, dude, I this is gonna be tough to buy gifts for the kids. You know? Yeah. Um, like we got to really get this thing honed in and figure this thing out. Uh-huh. And then. Um, He's like, not. He's like, just stay, stay with it. We're gonna do trust it. the process. So what we could do is we created a model where we basically the, the loan officer gets the full, the full comp, mm-hmm. right? So we, they get the lion's share. We we basically as a company operate off of twenty five basis points per loan. Wow, which is tough, right? You, I mean, you're yeah. a business, so you know what that yeah. means, right? So it becomes a volume game. Mm. So it's just, you know, Mike hit the recruiting trail really hard. And by doing that, there were times where he was bringing in so many loan officers. We didn't have 
a lot of the infrastructure. So it was, and I, you know, and we're going crazy, right? So he's bringing these guys on. I'm trying to find ways to to train them, onboard them. It's very so. tough quality versus quantity, right? right? You want both. That's you, actually you the that's real ideal. goal. Ideal is quantity and quality, both at the same time. Yeah. But you know, that's tough. It's man. tough to do. So we had to focus on, and in the beginning, it was all it was all quantity. Uh huh. But we were able to hit some great, you know, heavy hitters off the bat that we brought on that were just amazing guys. They're still mm -hmm. with us today. You um, need good, true lending partners do. to be able to do what you're doing. Yes, because, like, 100%. They have to have good back ends, man, because you're yeah. using them yes. to grow the the quantity. Like, and that's the thing. So, like, you guys had uh, Brett Weiss out here. Yeah, you Brett's know, about, my man. Ago. Great guy, man. Great, great guy. Um Got big he, biceps. He, he does, Jeez, right. yeah, That guy just yeah. you know, pumps iron all day long. You <laughs> I know? love that dude. Man, I'm like, how many loans? Are, forget loans, I'm pumping iron. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, great guy. We though. could rip him all day. Oh, we could. Yeah, we could, that's all know. good. Yeah. <laughs> did he have the leather, the leather jacket? <laughs> I think he did. Yeah. Assless chaps, maybe, yeah, too. Maybe, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, Brett, if you're out there, great yeah, yeah. guy. Well, uh, you know, yeah. Brett Weiss, is he's instrumental in our growth. Okay. okay? Yeah. So he came on, and he, he wanted to build a branch. We knew him yep. from the retail days when he worked with us at Equity Prime. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think we had the right model for him there. In fact, I know we didn't have the right model for him. It mm -hmm. was just, you know, we were hampered by by retail. So he came back around, um, and it was now we're a broker. And uh, he was he was instrumental. I remember the first day sitting down with him, he's sitting in my office, and he breaks out this briefcase. And he's like, hey, dude, look, these are all – Turndowns that I can't do anything. I couldn't do anything yeah. with my previous lender. I'm like, really? Well, let's, let's look at these. <laughs> let's yeah. go through them. Yeah. I think he walked out of there with like 20, 20 loans, like just just from Boom. just from going or just from the lenders that we had just set to up have that set do. up that he could do just by the uh, yeah by just by having the the choices. So all right, so right now you have what you're signed up with like sixty lenders. Yeah, yeah. About 60. honestly though, how many are you using? Do you think? Um, throughout the company do you have those metrics yeah we're, everyone's we're, different, different i'll be honest with you there's a lot there's a lot of just crazy non-qm guys that we've got out there oh so you you set that up so, okay yeah so we've set up i mean we, we can do anything from you know hard money bridge, everything fix and flips I mean, it's all out there right? okay. we got a lender set up for every one of those yeah, commercial, yeah, yeah. all that uh -huh. um but if you looked at how many were actually getting the loans i would say out of the if the, it's typical residential whatever yeah you, you, conventional big, fha well, well, uwms are a big one yeah yeah you know, we closed 340 loans with them last month nice wow you know, so and that was december you know so th they're our big one um home point home point's Caliber, great yeah cardinal um so i would say really probably about a solid 36 lenders okay. we close on a consistent basis with at least That's awesome. double digits with them. You know? Okay. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Nice, nice. All right. Well, then let me take a, a, a step back because after speaking with Brett and getting yep. to, and looking at you guys, I want to – you have a, a different model, right? You do. So you spent a lot of time setting up the, the, the training, right? All right. So so Mike's more recruiting people in. Yeah. You're in charge of more of the the training and onboarding, onboarding. for the most. I know a onboarding. lot more, yeah. but that's kind of your right. your spot, right? So you have this whole library, like you said, right? Because mm -hmm. your guys' goal is to grow even more with loan officers. Yes, and you do contract processing or third party for the it's most all part. Third party, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's the model. So. And you also have a model with with bringing LOs in. Do you want to talk about that? Brett t touched on it a bit. Uh, well, we, what we do is we've empowered our loan officers. I can't go into all the details. No, it's fine. <laughs> but right. we, we basically created a, a system where we empower our loan officers to, through word of mouth and referrals, mm -hmm. right, and professional referrals, they, they grow. Um, they're able to earn. Basically, what we've done is we've taken um, a part of what we would have earned as a commission, and we give it back to the loan officers so they can grow. Okay. Um, so there's there's a percentage that they can if they bring on a loan officer and they're closing loans and they can earn, um, you know, bips off of, of what they've closed and stuff okay. like that. So, okay. Um, that's helped us grow tremendously. You know, it's okay. helped us grow a lot. But when you look at the actual overall, I think it has to do with our culture. So we don't lose loan officers. You know, okay. we really don't. So um, yeah, let's talk about that. Like, how's that set up? Because you're in a bunch yeah. of different states too, right? Nineteen right now. So you're talking yeah. about. All right, this is different. There's a lot of different models. Like <laughs> yeah. my model, it's me and my brother right now. We're right. looking to hire, but we're just going mean and lean, yeah, right? I'm awesome. still producing. Yeah. It's different model. Oh, yeah. But you're, we're talking, and that's one type of culture. Yeah. Right. Now you're talking about culture. You're not losing the LOs, and you're over 19 states. Yeah. Like, how do you deal with culture when people are spread out? Right. The great question. So we've we've implemented technology at a high level. So. Okay. 
we do a lot of virtual sessions. Okay. Like, so you can you can go to our website right now, nexamortgage.com. And in the right hand, upper right hand corner of the screen, you can click on live video support. Mm. You can click on that right now and you can get our receptionist who'll come up and she will and take you wherever you need to go. If you're a loan officer out there and you're trying to run DU and you got an error code that keeps coming up, you can talk to one of our loan officers and loan officer support and they can walk you through how to fix it, you know, sharing the screens and all that okay. stuff all virtually. Wow. So, okay. So you're, it's really support, support, it's like support, crazy. Support like crazy. is exa- So, and, okay. and we had to create this and the, we knew that in order to grow, it wasn't about us. You know, we, we, we weren't going to be able to do, you know, like some models guys will do like, you know, a two, seven, five broker comp plan. They're giving yep. the LO like one twenty five or mm-hmm. one thirty whatever it is. And then they, they're getting a lion's share too. We knew that that, that that's that limited wasn't. growth. It wasn't going to, you're not going to, become large doing well when your goal was to be the biggest broker and then you have to that yeah 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 Yeah, i'm trying i'm I'm trying to think because this is a different model from what i've seen it is you know so if all right so if we go over how it's set up now you guys are obviously still in growth mode you probably have a billion more ideas but now like you said you you guys we know what you and mike do yeah for the most part right Then how was it branched down from there? You have branches, right? Yeah, right. Well, we, we do. Uh, we don't have uh, – you got to understand. So the whole branching model, there's maybe a few out there that are really branches. Like okay. Brent Weiss has like, a branch. Yeah, he's got his branch. You know, um, Tony Atkins out in California, he's got a branch. You know, Steve mm-hmm. Alonzo in, in Chandler, Arizona, he's got a branch. Okay. You know, guys like that. Those guys are true – branch models where they have employees underneath them yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. For the most part, they're all individual producing LOs. That's what I got from like everyone yeah. is their own, they're even though they're part of a branch of their own little business. That's what yeah. you're, that's the goal. In that's the here. mentality of it is, is mm-hmm. it, it, you're still an entrepreneur. Um, we've created a model where um, you don't have to take on all the hard work of starting up the business, getting the licenses yep. and all that stuff. We, we've done that. So we've, we, we give, the majority of the commission to the loan officer takes such a small piece. But in doing that, we hope that you're going to recruit other people with you and have more people come in. And as they start to grow, that's where we get our volume to finally, you know, afford Christmas toys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Christmas Going presents, back right? to that, right? Right. So does so. each LO kind of have their own little P&L? They do. That's you know, that's what I remember yeah. Brett was talking yeah. about, which is really cool. They do. So they have their they, own. They have, they have to maintain their own costs and expenses. Got it. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, you're only taking a little off the it? top to, to yeah. pay for other certain things. Exactly. Okay. All right. So you have the you have you guys up top. You got, you know, branches or individual, mm-hmm. like we talked yeah. about. I'll, I'm really curious about, like you just said, this LO uh, help desk yeah. type situation. Yeah. So what other support staff, because you do oh, third-party yeah. processing. We do. Can we talk about the support staff that really helps your company yeah. go, go, 100%, go, yeah. to help out other people? So our support guys, um, so from 6 a.m. Arizona time. Till 5 p.m. Arizona time. Uh, we've got, you know, people in HR. We've got people in payroll. We have, um, you know, you name it, accounting. You know, you have a question about, you know, one of the expenses that came out on your expense report or something like that might have been wrong. All right, you got somebody you can log in and talk to and get okay. it fixed, right? Okay. Um, and then our support guys, we have, so we have four guys that are our main loan officer support. They're helping LOs. With the LOSs, they're helping them with, you know, Arrive. They're helping them with Blink. Are you guys on Arrive for the most part? Is that, are you no, letting each LO figure point. out? They, they get to figure it out. They can have their own if they wanted we, to? We set them all up with Point to begin with because okay. right now we have so many files in Point that it would be hard to kind of yeah, transition yeah, yeah. that whole right thing now. over. So, Not to jump off topic, but I'm just no, curious about you know, where you guys if, are. If we were a brand new broker starting off right now, um, we would be more aligned. We would be full in with Arrive. Okay. Um, just their right now. It's, it's, it's just right now we got the transition yeah, yeah. it's kind of tough so we it. do have some guys that, that use arrive okay um so you have your support staff we do about four four or five support people staff, yep okay yeah we, and they can just call in about really anything for yeah. the most part I structuring mean, we, a deal like how's anything okay any, anything that goes on so our goal is that as a loan officer we understand that you know you're only as credible as the answers that you can provide and how quickly you can provide them to a client gotta be quick and efficient nowadays party. man you, you have to be right? have to so all of our stuff is it's all mobile, right? So whether you're on your phone, if you're if you're got your laptop okay. fired up or whatever it is, your tablet, you can pull up all this information, get answers to your questions right away. You can pull up your phone on go on go into our, our live support and you can get one of our loan officers and LO support mm. on the phone right now. Okay. So to me, I remember my my God, I remember when we became brokers. 
Um, and I was going out making the realtor relationships too and all stuff and trying to maintain them. And I remember sitting at open houses and, and engaging, you know, potential buyers that would walk through the house and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And I remember being asked a couple of questions and I had to go, oh, you know what? I have to check on that. Um, you know, oh, you know what? They're out of the office. Let me get back to you on Monday. Would that be okay? Yeah. Dude, you lose the deal. Your deal's done. done. It's walking, right? Right, right, right. So we, we try to make it as, as real time, as quick as possible so that you don't have to tell that client on a Saturday, hey, let me get back to you when I find when, – when they're in the office on Monday, I'll on get Monday, back to you. On Monday, yeah. No. Like you can go in there. You can log into our, our, our Nexa uh, university that we Is call Is that what's it. called? Yep. Nexa university? Nexa university. Okay. Go through all the information. You can get your answers. That's cool. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a different – that's a different type model, no doubt. They're yeah. giving the support. And like you said, that's that's the culture. To, to get back to the culture. That is the culture. Type, yeah. That's it. Is, or, you know. well, all right. So I see it. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of, and this is not bad, but no, no. different companies, they hear culture like, we're going to have a, a holiday party. Right, right. We're going to do this. No. Right. We're gonna. That's all well and good. It is. But it sounds like your model is, listen. Let's get let's get shit done. Yeah. Then you can go to your family yes. and be your own. This is what you want to do. Yeah. So you're actually you have LOs that just can be self sufficient. You don't have to do big holiday parties. Maybe you do something. I don't know. But no, no. Yeah, but this is right. like you're letting each person run their own thing and do what they want with their lives. And we're yeah. not throwing in all the mumbo jumbo. No. Does that no. make sense? That's, is that kind yeah. of what you're trying to? Yeah, that's that's do? about it. I think that's what people want. You know, it's it. We use a common sense approach to everything that we do. So when when I'm doing an onboarding class. I talk about our core values, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and I mean, they're common sense. You know, number one is the golden rule. Treat others as you want to be treated. Mm-hmm. You know, don't be an asshole. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> it's that Just t- don't be a dick. And, and that goes to that goes to everybody. So that goes from, you know, somebody who's in support. Um, that goes to a receptionist. That goes to our third-party partners that are out there, our AEs. Don't be an asshole, right? Don't yeah. treat them like shit. No. Um, and that's something that, that we pride ourselves in, right? Um, that, that's one of our big ones. And then, you know, a couple things from that we align with, with UWM is be a thumb pointer, not a finger pointer. Yep. You know, like it, it, in every situation you got to ask yourself, what could I have done differently? Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't mean you're wrong. It doesn't mean you're right. Mm-hmm. What could I have done differently? And if you're always seeking to improve, you're going to have a, you're going to have a culture of people who are just, um, hitting that next level, mm-hmm. right. And wanting to strive for that next level. So that we, we, we pride ourselves in that. Yeah. And that, and that goes back to, I don't want to dive into this. Like, like we said, true partners. Yes. Right. hundred percent. So you guys did something a few months ago we where did. you totally cut off Quicken. Did you, did you hear about that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and you guys, you guys had Quicken. We did. Right. Yeah. Um, what made you guys really say, listen, we're totally fully just cutting them off. You have mm-hmm. 60 lenders in your repertoire. Yeah. Done. Right. Like what was the, the thought process behind that? So. I mean, I could probably touch on that. Why? Yeah, but you know, well, yeah, we, you know, we had talked about it with our loan officers. Um, it, it felt like months. Like we had we had been bringing it up. I think in our last uh, at the um, AIM Arizona Loan uh, Expo that we had done, mm-hmm. uh, Mike was on stage and he had mentioned, you know, Quickie's next, right? Quicken's, you know, they're next to be cut off because we had just cut off. I mean, we had just come back from. Nam, I think it was Nam okay. or, or Originator Connect. I'm sorry, yeah, one of those. Originator right? Connect. Okay. Mike and I were out there in Vegas and, you know, we're sitting out there and we, and we see this presentation, um, from, uh, the executive vice president of freedom is out there. Right. And he's basically going on talking about, you know, um, that it's a, it's a RESPA violation to give, uh, brokers back their client that they originally referred to them for the original loan when they do you know, an inquiry yeah, yeah. for it, a refinance. That's the whole point. It's their client now they're saying. It's unbelievable, okay. right? So I, I literally, you know, get up in that meeting, in in that presentation. Yeah. And, and I go, I looked at Mike. I go, so this is how they're still in our clients? I'm like, this guy's an asshole. Yeah. Like, he said it loud. I mean, people had heard it, right? Uh-huh. And we walked out, great. you know, and like the whole rest in true of the weekend, New York fashion, yeah, the whole rest <laughs> of the asshole, right? The whole rest of the weekend, we're in <laughs> Vegas and they're like, you guys are coming up to like, hey, do you hear somebody call Alan Milliman an asshole? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, 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 they did. You know, yeah. so, you know, who was that guy? I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, it, you know, it was, but it, we, we went back to the office and on Monday we cut him off. So that's it. We're done. Freedom. You cut freedom, off at that you, point. You freedom. You're done. Yeah. You done. Know, we're done with that. So then, that you know, we, that sparked the whole, you know, well, we're talking about cutting off all mm-hmm. the people who are not, not true partners. So they're not, they're not there to help us grow. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's a true partner for, for you guys? For, for us, a true partner is somebody who, number one, protects our loan officers' book of business. Number mm-hmm. one. 
first and foremost, it's it's not about me. It's about my guys. 100%, right? Right. Mike and I are not here to take large pieces of the pie and mm-hmm. leave people with nothing, right? Mm-hmm. We we know that we're a company that's built by LOs for LOs. Mm-hmm. And we know that we're only as successful cool. as our LO. So mm-hmm. if they're going to be successful, really if point. they have long-term success, we will have long-term success. And that's our goal. That's our philosophy. So, you know, when, when you're talking about um, not putting it in writing that we won't, you know, uh, poach your clients or we won't start soliciting them after a certain point. You yeah, know, that obviously the means they are. Yeah, exactly, right? So put in writing then. Well, we'll put in, we'll, we'll tell you that we won't do it. But they refused to put in writing over uh-huh. and over again. So that was a, that was a big start. Um, and then just knowing that uh, you know, I remember we got back from um, Originator Connect and all that stuff, and I just you know, I'm go- messing around. I go on Google and I Google mortgage broker, mm-hmm. and the first thing that pops up is Quicken Loans. Yeah, and it's a retail. It's and not it's even the like, retail. It's not it's even not a even wholesale. Sale. What yeah. even wholesale? Yeah. It was it was it was Rocket Mortgage push button. You know all this, and I'm like, crazy you, got, like you got to be kidding me. Right. So um, it was just these things that, that, you know, that started happening over and over again. Um, you know, the, 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 the whole glitz and, you know, the, the glam, like the, mm-hmm. the, they're going to get, they're going to get you in what price, right? They're going to get you in what price. You're going to get you in with these incentives. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when you, when you finally take the loan there and they do it, when the refi comes around, you're not getting that refi. Yeah, you you got to think long-term. You got to think long-term. And it's not going to can't be a one and done. And, that, and that's the thing. So, you know, in, in it, along with our culture, um, what I what I like to see is, you know, if you're a loan officer um, who's only worried about yourself, right? You only care about, you know, you, your piece of business, then we're probably not going to be a good fit for you. Okay. Right? We, we believe in a big team atmosphere. Okay. okay. That's cool. So we believe in helping one, helping one another, right? And so when you think about doing loans with those other guys, it's, it's transactional. Mm-hmm. It's that one transaction that you're going to, that you're going to get done. But you're not gonna you're not gonna build a relationship mm. with that buyer going forward. Mm. And sometimes sometimes you know you got some guys that do fabulous work out there, and, and maybe they are able to maintain a relationship with a few of their buyers. Um, but it's you it's can't not control a, them all, man. That's a beast. Right. It's a beast. Quicken's oh, you, a beast. You're I mean, going against the, the biggest beast out there. Yeah, you know. So I can't put on a, the TV and watch a watch a game. Yeah. On the weekends Without. and not see that that stupid you know push button you know. Well, maybe next will be out there. Then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, it'd be awesome. But, you know, I don't think we would ever. Right. You know, so that's that a true crazy. partner. But like right. we were just talking about earlier, not being an asshole, not being a dick. Right. Like it goes both ways. It does. Like your LO, like you just said, has to be cool with the AE. Yeah. Like I, I hate the this food chain. Yeah. No, I got you. I don't yeah. think it's cool. Like I always say, like, like it used to be forget about mortgage, it, you know, real estate agent, mortgage, right. title, yeah. escrow, whatever you call it. I believe it. it we're called the hussy team, yep. not because it's Nick and I. No. It's because I really believe that everyone involved in, I hate saying transaction, is the team to right. get it done. Right. So you're you're preaching true partnership from f- for your guys as well, yeah. going back to the AE right. and to that lender, because that's how things work. And, and that's, right? Yeah, that, that's exactly that's how That's a it true, works. true partnership. True partner. True partner, yeah. you know, and, and we view our, our, you know, like you said, you know, you got your realtors, title, everybody's in this thing together. Together, man. Right? We're all in this together. Yeah. So, um, it's already fast paced. It's already twist and turny. Like, oh, yeah. let's just get it done. I mean, we've actually, just to get back to the, like, you know, our core, we've actually let producing loan officers go. Cause it did make because sense. Because they acted like a dick to, to an account exec mm-hmm. or, you know, they were rude or whatever, or it just didn't make sense, you know? And one of the things that I think we want to, we are good for self-producing loan officers. Okay. Um, coming from the retail channel who want to become brokers, but maybe aren't ready to take that full leap into it. Like, the mm-hmm. di- you know, go two feet in, mm-hmm. you know, get everything set up, licensing, all that stuff. That's a lot. Yeah, it, it is that's a, a whole, lot. We could do another hour on oh, that. Oh, Jesus. You know? Yeah, so th- that's where, that's our niche. That's our, man, that's where we're hitting our stride. Where we're, where we're not very good at right now, where I'd like to be better at is loan officers or, or people who are coming to the, um, you know, mortgage industry fresh out of something else like just got licensed you're green and you need training and and you need um like a mentorship mm-hmm. that is the one area that we struggle you're, you're on working on yeah well because not everyone spent six years at blockbuster right, and then right, whatever right. Years doing it and fan, could yeah. jump into it right, it's right. very very tough man i mean it is. it's it's it is tough yeah and, and you guys 
like you just said, that's, I mean, that's, that's cool. You say you're just not the best at, but I'm assuming it's something you're working on. It's something that's on, on our horizon radar. to work on. It, yeah, it really yeah. is. Uh, I think it's, it's something that we see in the next 12, 18 months, the transition to the broker community, to the, just the mortgages alone um, from other industries, I think is going to be a lot higher. I mean, brokers are going to gain more market share. You're not just going to get that from retail, Mm -mm. you know, imploding, you know, and exploding and and jumping into broker. You're going to also get that from new people entering the industry that really want to um, provide just a better way of life for their clients, Mm -hmm. for themselves, for their teammates, you know, their employees. Uh, And I, I think, honestly, the mortgage industry does that. Yeah. You know, I really do. 100%. All right. Well, we got like 10, 10 to 15. Okay. All right. So I got two questions. You guys have grown rapidly. Yeah. You have more on the horizon. Where do you see next to this year by the end of the year? Like, what, what are the goals? Like, where do you see it yeah. if you had to predict it? So um, I see us over 1,000 loan officers. Where are you at now? We're at uh, just about 400, 389 wow. uh, with 403 pending. So, you know, we're already at 400. We had the goal of 1K by May. You're going to um, try and recruit Todd Bitter? <laughs> My boy Todd? I love Todd, man. <laughs> Todd's I, you know man. what's so funny? Is it's, a, it's the running <laughs> joke. I had to. <laughs> no, it, dude, it is hilarious. Every time I'm around Todd at an event, he's like, hey, 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 don't stand too close to those Nexa guys. <laughs> like, you're going to you're gonna drink the Kool-Aid. You're going to be over there. Uh, Todd's fabulous, man. Yeah. We love him. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's in our market, which is great, right, too. Right, that's why, yeah. Yeah, that's great, great. great. Um, yeah, so we, we see ourselves um, over 1,000 loan officers. That's the goal. Um, largest broker in the country. That would get um, you there if you have a thousand LOs. You think if you go a yeah, certain amount well, of production, we, we, tra- we track numbers. Um, here's the thing: we want a thousand loan officers, but we want to be closing, you know, four thousand units. Okay, you know, you know, way above the the national average, mm-hmm. and that's our goal. Cool. So we're starting to, to focus a lot more. Mike is still on the growth path. Um, I'm fo- focusing a lot more right now on getting those guys there, like get, getting getting the production up. So um, our goal is to be the largest, and hopefully we can help, you know, other – we want to be like a, a soundboard for new brokers that come over. Cool. And we, we want people to say, hey, there's another way to do this. You know, no offense. Like, I love your model. Your model is yeah. great. If, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. When we first started, we were like, hey, dude, let's just go Should two-man just roll shop, this way? just yeah. roll this thing. Yeah, just, we're torn you know. on what we want to do, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll pick your brain on, on, on ways yeah, to go one day. 100%, man. Yeah. yeah, anytime. All right, last question. Yeah. The industry in general. I mean, we could look five years out from like, where do you see it five years out from now? Three to five years. Yeah. Where do you see this going? That's a great question. It's moving so, quick, man. It's, Technology. Man, it's moving fast. It's moving fast. I, I see this, the industry in general. Um, people have talked about technology replacing the loan officer. And mm-hmm. Eventually, you know, everything's going to be automated and this, that, and the other. Um, at the end of the day, I still see, even in three to five years from now, I still see the importance of going to a trusted mm. mortgage expert. Advisor um, expert, yep. I, I see is such an importance. That relationships will always uh, trump the, you're going to have the guys that are technology, right? I got to have it now. You know, mm-hmm. got to press the button. Gotta yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to have that, right? You're never going to replace that. Mm-mm. Okay, there's a market for that too. Like this is a huge market that we're in. But to go to somebody who you trust, who you know is going to take care of you, who's going to provide you better options, more options mm-hmm. um, and really and figure out your specific goals. Like no robot can no, take no, away. No. Everyone's different. You can do not all cutter. the algorithms you want, but I'm not going to be able to talk mm-hmm. to you and find out your inner, your inner being. Yeah. Or do you have a kid on the way? Are you like right. things like that? That's not mortgage related. Yeah. A lot of things. So I see um, uh, technology will always play a part in our industry. I think the people who are going to be very successful find a way to continue to merge technology with the relationship. Mm. Um, and those will be the ones that, those will be the, the, the companies, those will, be, those will be the brokers that are around for a long time. And they're going to have sustained success. Um, and they're going to align themselves, I see, with true partners. I would love to say, I'd like to be bold in five years, say Quicken Loans is going to be out of wholesale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I would love that. Uh, let them just focus on retail. That's fine. Sure. But uh, I don't, you know, that's that probably not going to happen. There's, you know, a need for competition, right. which is good. Um but yeah, I, I see it. I see it thriving and doing really well. Okay, cool. Yeah. Hope Thanks, so. bro. Hope's all right. Yeah, yeah. No, hope's great. <laughs> there it is, man. Matt Grella. Awesome. Next some warriors, man. I appreciate yeah, it, dude. Appreciate it, man. Thank it was you. Awesome.